And uh, then we're going to start with a little bit of a nail repair on a small crack on here. This patch is still holding up pretty well, um, but I have a little crack on my ring finger on this side that needs to be fixed real quick. Um, and then we're going to be painting my nails with Alley Kid Lacquer Feronia, which has ugly bottle syndrome, but which is my favorite polish. Um, and then we might be doing some swatch stick organization stuff. I have like a bug bite or something right there that's really annoyingly itchy. So if you see me messing with it, please yell at me and tell me to stop. Because I don't want it to turn into a big thing. All right. Excess polish hanging out on my hand. So let's clean that off. I need to get some more acetone for my little tub. <sighs> I spilled a bunch of tea all over my paper towel earlier so if you see a weird brown area over here that's what that was before it dried it was just a bunch of tea okay so we're going to be starting with the repair here and I'm just giving my other nails a quick wipe down, getting that other excess polish off my hand. I haven't really scrubbed my cuticles super great today, but I know that I'm going to be making my nails matte, which means that I can scrub them later and not ruin the shiny finish because there will not be a shiny finish to ruin. So, let me get my little my little things here. Sure. Okay. Nail glue and the nail patch powder. Uh, this is just a real small beginnings of a tear. I don't think I need to use a tea bag to reinforce it. I'm just going to use a little bit of this nail powder to kind of reinforce the area. It won't take more than about two seconds and then we can move into the polishing part of our day. I'm putting the glue on and then I am just, I'm actually going to do this over the cap because it can catch some of the excess powder. Just tapping powder on there and then tapping the excess off. Once that is dry, we can buff it and it should be good to go. It's been quite a while since I've gotten a rip on the sides of one of my ring fingers, but that used to be where my nails would break all the time or rip or whatever. Welcome back. All right, let's wait for a second for this to set. I'll have some tea. All right. Yeah. My kajinks. Yeah. This side, the inside corner of my ring nails used to be where I would tear the soonest. And part of that I think has to do with the fact that I have a natural tendency on those nails. Um, you know, sometimes when your, your nail is growing out, there's like a, an edge bit that's like kind of skin and kind of nail and you're not really sure what's what. 
So that little edge would split and then get caught on things and then make a rip. Um, and now that I file my nails regularly, I'll, you know, because I make them oval, I, I go around the sides. I think that that helps me to file off any little possible teary beginnings before they begin. But, you know, not all of them can have that, you know, cause. Some of them are caused by other things. Um, this is a, a very extra fine grit file. I'm just using it right on top of the little patched area to smooth it out so it's not a lumpy thing. Oh, sorry, that's getting kind of blown out. You can see how that side of the nail is slightly thicker, right, now that it has a little patch on it. Yeah. Mine are relatively hard, um, but sometimes if, you know, like on this thumb, I picked some polish off when I shouldn't have, so now I have some peeling there on the end because I did it to myself. I'm not buffing the actual nail, I'm just hitting the high point where the patch is. And then I'm going to run across it really quick with a Q-tip with some acetone. Make sure that there's no dust and that it's all set down real good. And there's no edge there now, it's smooth. Um, this other nail had a full-on across break. It, you can't really see where the break is because the patch is covering it up, but on the bottom side of the nail, um, it you can see the line. I can see the line in person. You probably can't right there. Uh, when it broke last week, it was there, and now the break's grown out to there. So next week when I file my nails, it'll probably be out all the way, which is nice. Uh, this is actually pretty smooth, and it's holding up really well. I don't need to repatch that. Uh, LJ, I actually am done already <laughs> with the patch, because it was just a minor little rip here on the side. Um, I have a whole post um, on my Instagram from last week when this nail broke, and I had to patch the whole thing. I used this five-second IBD glue with a tea bag. And then I also did a layer over the top with the IBD glue and this nail filler powder. I, the concept is similar to um, the Orly Nail Repair Kit, I think, but I already had this glue, so I just got the powder that went with it, so I didn't have to get the whole kit or whatever. There's a little step-by-step -step photo thing on my Instagram um, of that process. I don't know. Let me, uh, let me see if I can... That's my Instagram, if anybody's curious to go find that post. Um, but on this nail, which is the one that I was patching today, uh, I just used the glue and the, a little bit of the nail powder over the top just because it was the beginnings of a rip and I just wanted to reinforce it. Um, and I don't think it necessitates a whole tea bag's worth of extra effort. I can't use gel. I'm allergic to gel. Otherwise, I probably would use that the one that Colette recommends, because, you know, she makes good recommendations. But this works pretty well. You know, this break was from this edge all the way across to here. It was only hanging on by a little thread on the side. Um, and with the patch that I did, it's, it's rock solid, you know, it's not going anywhere. You know, the tea bag only works for me if I put the glue down first and then put the tea bag on it and then put more glue over the top so that the tea bag is completely saturated and then let the glue completely dry. But it still, even then, gives way when I take my polish off. This, I was able to take the polish off and the patch is still good because I used the powder with it. 
The tea bag works better for me than the silk wraps. I've tried those too, and they're too thick. They don't curve around the nail as well as I would like. Um, and so they, also they're thicker, so they feel more, you know, they, they're taller on your nail. It feels like there's more happening. Okay. As previously stated, I have not exfoliated my cuticles today. I'm going to do it after I'm done painting, just because, I don't know, there isn't any cuticle actually stuck to my nail plate that will interfere with the polish wearing, and the skin around my nail I'm going to exfoliate later because I'm wearing matte nails today, and I don't need, necessarily, uh, to worry about it scratching my top coat like I normally would. Okay, let me zoom this properly to the right focus level. There, that's all right. I think. <laughs> Does that look all right to you? Uh, and then we're gonna put on our base coat. There's a, a nail polish gal on YouTube, Amanda Alexander. Um, and she, she's also on Instagram, um, and she has this thing called uh, Nicest Things Day, where the 10th of every month, it, you're supposed to, like, try to use, like, your best, uh, things, like, if you have fine china, right, or a fancy necklace or something that you save for special occasions, to use it, because, if it's just sitting there never being used because there's never a special enough occasion, then what's the point, right? And the 10th was yesterday. But I, uh, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm using my favorite polish today, kind of in honor of the idea, even though I missed the actual day. Fashion footing, I think, is the moniker that she goes by I'm on some sites and maybe by her real name on other sites. I'm not sure. She's funny. Her sense of humor in her Instagram posts is, uh, in her stories is like, she's very dry and sarcastic, but also shares a lot of opinions with me. Like class working is awesome. And I face things when I'm at a store because I don't want the employees to have to do it later. If I notice it's wrong, I might as well help them fix it. Right. Stuff like that. I don't know. There's a little underhang right there. Okay. You, do you use a quick dry top coat, Mighty Jinx? Because that is a complete game changer. Quick dry top coat. Um, you put it on over the polish and it helps the polish underneath cure. And it makes everything go like the top of it cures super quickly so you can start doing things like in 15 minutes instead of like in like an hour how how funky that's really weird hey praise where's my cuticle scoop oh goodness <laughs> and by cuticle scoop i mean the revlon nail file that i use to clean polish out from around my cuticle edge while i'm painting because i don't have an orange stick because i prefer to use this because i can just wash it with acetone between manicures and use it again this guy i could never do without him it even though that's not the intended original purpose or function. How are you, Praise?
Did you try it with more than one SE polish, Mesa Jinx? Because it could have been just a weird bottle. Ah, yes. So that you can press multiple books at a time, phrase. Or so that you can press books that have a larger individual footprint. Or both. Okay, so my favorite polish, the one that we're using today, is, as I said at the very beginning of stream, before anybody was here even, I don't think, uh, Alley Kid Lacquer Feronia, which has an awful, awful case of ugly bottle syndrome because, you know, it just settles out weirdly in the bottle. That does not affect its application in the least. Uh, it still comes out, you know, just fine on the brush. It's a uh, olive green that has a little um, flakes and micro flakies of gold and coppery tones. And it is absolutely ridiculously gorgeous. And it has an excellent formula. It's just going on like butter. Look at that. You can't see all the flakies very well. I'll zoom you in in a minute. And then I'll give you a, a look at it. Oof. This color. So pretty. It's not one coat. I will have to do a second coat because there are some places that are slightly sheer like here on the side of this finger. But that's pretty good coverage for it allowing all the flakies to show through as well as it does. It's excellent. There's a hair there. It's a cat hair or a cotton ball fuzzy. Probably a cotton ball fuzzy because it was white. And that's either from the baby cat, from her chest area, or her tummy, or it's from a cotton ball. So here we did bumper cuticle edge sidewall thing, whatever. It's more like a sidewall because it's on the side. It's tape on there. Okay, so let's do the first coat on the second hand. A little bit too much polish on my brush, but I'm trying to smooth it out a little bit before I dip back in the bottle. There we go. Hey, Missy, how are you today? I like the clerk. Uh, we're not doing anything super complicated today. I just feel like enjoying this color by itself. So we're just painting this, but then as my uh, title should hopefully say, 
we might do some swatch stick sorting together after I'm done with painting. Because I was working on that earlier today and did not finish. And you guys are probably interested, possibly, in some of that. So, you know. Getting over a cold, yeah. My uh, my boss had a cold that she got while she was on vacation and she's been struggling with for several weeks. So hopefully yours does not linger. I'm doing pretty well in general. Uh, we just got some not so great health news for somebody family wise. But aside from that, doing well. This little edge was not smooth and it was bugging me. I'm also going to go around under the tip of the nail. Like this. Because there was some underneath that needed to go away. Okay, patched nail. We're going to try to be as clean as possible for the application of the polish, especially on the sidewalls next to where the break starts here so that I don't have to go around that part with acetone if I can help it. So sorry if that's off camera while I get in a little close to see what I'm doing. I like to compare my nail shapes between my two hands because I know that not every nail is going to be symmetrical with every other nail in the way that it grows. It's just, I mean, we're organic beings. We don't grow perfectly symmetrically, but I try to give the illusion of evenness if I can. Like this ring nail that I'm painting right now, the nail bed of it is longer than all of the other nails in relationship to um, like how it, it, it extends further this way down toward my knuckle than the rest of them do. So if I were to only talk about my length as from the tip of the nail up, um, if I file all my nails evenly with that in mind, this nail looks disproportionately long. So what I have to do is make this one slightly shorter toward the tip of the finger and make this one slightly longer toward away from the tip of the finger, like not, not dramatically longer, but very slightly. And then they look balanced next to each other. Yeah. My, uh, my mother-in-law, um, was, uh, dealing with cancer stuff and then had been clean on, you know, scans for a while. And then her most recent one, they found a new spot of stuff. So not, not a happy thing to hear, but you know, they kind of already know how to deal with it. You know, they, they are, it's not like a brand new shock, just like a, a, a sad setback. She has an amazing attitude about it, like, all the time. She relies on the Lord and always says, you know, God is good, so. This is not quite dry. Thank you, praise. It's in her um, in her lung, this new spot. So not 
one of her other ones was um, in her uh, brain area, which thankfully was able to be removed without any complications, amazingly. Um, they are going to get another scan done to make sure that that area is still clean, but as far as we know at the moment, you know, it's not. Thank you. I'm sorry, you guys, that was not even on camera. Ugh, this polish is such a joy to paint the texture of it as it goes on my nails, just like very nice. I bumped. We'll have to do a little bit of cleanup around the edges for some of these, but mostly that's a pretty clean application. Let me zoom you in a little bit so you can uh, see the uh, the flakies and things. Goodness, I don't think that's quite. can't get the shimmer quite right. There. We still aren't catching the copperiness quite so well as I can see in person. And obviously, like there's these tiny, there, there's like a golden copper shimmer and then there's these little copper micro flakies and then gold flakies and you can kind of see the shimmer and you can kind of see the gold flakies but you're not getting the little copper micro flakies but they're so pretty i'm glad you like it nisi too it's my favorite this particular polish number one on my list come on focus this please thank you um, formula and color both together inform that decision. And I don't want it to be that bright. Please stop. <laughs> there we go. That's better. I just hit my nail on the light a little bit. But we will be okay. Yeah. Okay, so second coat over here. Okay. 
Oh, something ran into this one, boy. That's why I'm glad for Topco. I mean, the second coat by itself smoothed it out pretty well, but even so. Even so. I'm thinking about the Disney movie Coco for some reason. At this moment in my brain. Don't know why. That's not in focus. It was messy. I was messy on my pinky. As previously discussed with the uneven organic nature of human bodies, uh, this pinky is a jacked up piece of crap when it comes to the way that it wants to grow on its own. And I say that in the most loving way possible. But it wants to be asymmetrical and like grow that way more than I want it to. But, you know, I make him behave well enough you know, with filing. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do quick drag top coat, and then we're going to do matte top coat. But before we do any of that, we're going to do some cleanup with some acetone around the edges. Which shouldn't take all that long. That's okay. I'll see you later, Nisi. Have fun with your unexpected company. <laughs> I'll see you later. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, why? Why nail? Why are you trying to do this? All right, this nail is the most, like, streamlined, symmetrically perfect nail that I have. This ring nail. I already discussed that this one's longer than it should be, but aside from that, it's pretty symmetrical. This one wants to go this way, and the smile line is, like, a lot higher on this side than that side. This pinky's normally fine. This ring, this middle finger's normally fine. Both of my index nails want to do like a V curve instead of a C curve. I don't know if you can see that. How it like peaks slightly in the center. It's like, but why? And that's mostly when they're shorter that they do that. The longer they get, the more it evens out, which is kind of the opposite of some of my other nails. This is just a little e.l.f. concealer brush dipped in acetone that I'm using to clean up, and this is an older one that has seen many uses and is getting a little frizzly. There's a, another. This one is a cat hair. Stuck on there. There we go. I got it.
right under the tip there is a little bit of extra. Okay, that's looking all right. <laughs> my cat steals my socks. My fussy socks. So I just gave her the ones that she wanted and got myself other ones that I keep in a drawer where she can't get them. But it's the middle of summertime right now and I don't even want to think about fuzzy socks. <laughs> because cozy they may be, but not when it's hot. Good gracious. Okay. All right, so that's cleanup done on this hand. We're going to top coat it after we do cleanup on the other hand. Just making the line. Oh, acetone paint. Do not mix. I'll clean. When I'm dipping my brush, sometimes I get a little bit overzealous and dip it in too far and get paint on. Uh, from the handle wet with the acetone and then it comes off on my finger. This is another place where my nails are uneven. This one wants to be more square. This one, I mean the other way. This one wants to be more square. This one wants to be more curved. So I have to intentionally slightly curve this one on the corners. and slightly flatten that one, which I was just doing. So that they're more even, right? Oh, big cat's here, <gasps> big cat. I'm gonna give you cat cam. Here she is. This is Amber, isn't she pretty? She's the prettiest one. Which is not to say that Char isn't pretty because my other cat Char is also pretty. Half the time. And half the time she looks like a trash baby. I accidentally got a little bit of extra acetone on this middle finger. I need to daub a little bit of polish on there. Right. There. Because it removed some of the polish from on top of some of the flakies and it made it look a little weird. Okay. Uh, we want to be extra and especially careful on that middle finger once we get to it, as I stated previously, to not get the acetone too much along that edge where the break starts. Hi, bro. How are you today? Okay, 
That's looking all right. Let's do some top coat after I stretch. Oh, she just got there. Yes, you. You're cute. All right. I'm just gonna use. Oh my glisten and glow top coat's not over here. I left it on the table. I guess that means that we're using vibrant vinyls. <laughs> that's the one that I have. Oh, you're sick too. That's I'm all good. Okay, so we're gonna do this top coat and then we're gonna do matte top coat. And oops, whoa, that's getting super blown out. Sorry. Um, and hopefully once they're matte, you'll be able to pick up on those little bronze micro flakies when I zoom you in again. I'm a hoping. But first, we got a top coat with regular top coat. I am using the Sage and Citrus Smell. That's the one I've been kind of enjoying the past couple of weeks uh, of this top coat. Just very mellow and calming. Sorry, that's, I think I might need to take the focus down a little bit, hey? Right, that's a little fuzzy. Is that better? Right there. Uh, that's more in focus. Oh, yeah. Sinusitis is yucky. Any sort of infection that tends to want to linger is yucky. But one that affects your breathing and your quality of life, therefore, no good. So let's do this hand. You want a generous amount of top coat, but not like a that generous. I really overloaded my brush. That little dry bit of skin right there. Can't see it super well there. Do you see it? That will be exfoliated later. <laughs> it will be removed with sugar scrub. Yes, it is so 100% me. You were not here when I said that this is my favorite color of nail polish. This polish is my favorite polish. Um, I think I bought them on Amazon Praise. They might be in your order history on Amazon. 
<laughs> since I used your account to order them, possibly. Well, look at that. I apparently banged that nail, so we are going to see if I need to do a touch-up blob polish there. Yes. Yes, I do. We're going to keep it as thin as possible because we don't want it to get all bulky. It's, yeah, it's my favorite color, and then this particular polish, I just love the, the formula and the flakies and everything about it. It's just like, yes. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? I know, I'll show you. Oh, 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 you're talking about the feet. Um... It's possible that I got them somewhere else. I don't remember. It could be that I already had them somewhere in my... Uh, I'm going to do this one first so that the middle nail has a chance to dry just a second longer. Um, it, it's possible that they were feet that I already had, praise, um, as well. Uh, Alakid, Lacquer, Feronia. Oh, um, I just had a little bit of a rip here on this nail uh, that I patched with uh, nail glue and the nail filler powder. Um, this nail, the patch that I did last week was still holding up really well, so I actually did not redo that one. Um, but if you look at my post on Instagram from last week, uh, I have a step-by-step -step of how I, I repaired this one and the patch was still strong and holding up well, even after, you know, I filed my nails and removed my polish with acetone. It was still, still good. Yeah, I uh, I used the same powder and the glue just to reinforce the one on this nail. It, no, it's tea bag, yes, but then also um, a layer of nail filler powder with the nail glue over the top of that to reinforce it and really make it extra super duper strong. I. Uh, it's similar to the Orly Nail Rescue, I think I mentioned before. Oh, the cat's gone. Well, you get me again. <laughs> uh, I'm using this IBD five-second nail glue with the nail filler powder that they have. It's called IBD Nail Filler Powder because um, I already had this glue. But I think the concept is the same. Um, although with the Orly one, I think you dip your nail into the powder rather than shaking it over the top. I kind of like the shaking though, to be honest. It gives me more control of placement. <sighs> I was saying earlier that I prefer tea bag to silk wrap just because the silk wrap is a little bit thicker it feels bulkier on the nail um, and I can't use gel because I'm allergic to it so this is a good alternative for me I think it might be let's find out I looked at the ingredients when I bought it but I don't remember what it was uh, those are instructions in multiple languages. Uh, ingredients. Polymethyl methacrylate. 
So if that's the same as acrylic powder, then yeah. If not, then no. P-O-L-Y-M-E-T-H-Y-L space M-E-T-H-A-C-R-Y-L-A-T-E. -E. Okay, let's go in with our matte top coat. Um, here it is. Pixotic polish, truly, matte, deeply. I have raved about this many times. Yeah. Well, I did gel nails on myself at home and uh, did not know enough to be careful with the dispersion layer when I cleaned it off afterward. Um, and developed an allergy. So, I wasn't allergic with it to begin with. I think it was user error. One of the things that I love about this matte top coat is that it does not shrink and it actually dries quickly. A lot of matte top coats, like you'll put on your regular polish and your regular top coat, and then you'll go in with the matte top coat. And even if it was set with the quick dry top coat, the matte top coat will re soften everything under it. And you have to wait like it didn't have a quick dry top coat. This one doesn't do that. There's a hair here. Please come out. Gosh, he's really in there. There we go. That was like an eyebrow hair or an eyelash. Sorry, hang on one second. I'm just trying to. Okay. Oh, uh, what was I even saying? Oh, uh, top coat, matte top. Um, a lot of times they also make the manicure more easy to chip. Um, and this one does not do that. And a lot of other ones, if you get dried bits of polish around the rim, they come off on your nail like little white flecks if you accidentally get any on your brush. I have not had that happen with this. Uh, top coat and I've refilled the bottle twice now and there has been dried polish around the rim but it doesn't tend to either get on the brush or it doesn't transfer to the nail or it doesn't make it look white if it does like it just isn't an issue which is really nice and it self levels really well um while it's drying so like you can see here that does not look smooth right i just painted it on but after it dries it totally smooths out it is great i love it i used to just buff my nails matte because i hated all the other matte top coats i tried so much and uh then i tried this one and i absolutely love it because it solved all of my complaints Uh, little spot right there. Okay. I was at uh, Praise's house the other day. We were watching a glass blowing competition show called Blown Away. Grace, is that right? Blown Away? And it was interesting. It's like 
you know, every episode one person gets eliminated and they're all like working toward this grand prize or whatever, like a lot of reality TV prize types shows. Um, they have like a theme that they have to be designing their glass work around for each week and complete the production of it within a time limit and then they get judged. It's quite interesting. Okay, now that we've got matte top coat on here, let me see if I can get those little copper micro cookies to show up. Can you see them? I can see them. Can you see them? I need to do clean up with my top coat, obviously. You can see all the dry polish around my edges. But I can there. So there they are, little copper micro flakies. Yay. <laughs> there they are. And we'll put matte top coat on the second hand and then we'll do cleanup. Yes. It's got gold flakies and little copper micro flakies and a kind of a coppery golden shimmer. And it is gorgeous. Yep. There's a little edge on the front here that I missed with my matte top coat. I do want to make sure that I evenly encapsulate the nail just so there isn't any weird shiny bit there at the edge. Oh, Penny Confetti. Thank you, Braze. Through Ian's account. <laughs> You're funny. I appreciate the Penny Confetti. Hey, does that mean that you're first or second for uh, bits? Because somebody else was throwing confetti the other day. Does that make you first?
I appreciate. <laughs> How are you doing on your uh, your stack of orders, praise? By the way. Oh yeah, exactly. Again, we need to do cleanup around the edges when we're done because there's one thing that this matte top coat does not do, and that is look attractive when dried onto the skin. But, yeah. Okay. This pinky just always gets like the worst paint job ever. I'm sorry, pinky. You're just so wonky. It's hard to do straight strokes. Ugh. Okay. So, top coat's done. Let's get our cleanup going. Oh, big cat's back. Big cat's back. With her little husky feet. All right. I want to get a more streamlined cleanup book. Clean up book. <laughs> cleanup brush. This one is a little bit less frizzly than the one I was using before. I mean, they're only a dollar, so it doesn't. It doesn't take a lot of doing to get a replacement when one of them gets sad. Okay. Excess polish gun. Let's get on to the actual nails. There you go. There's why. There. Hey, Praise, did you see that Kaylee got her elbow dislocated? She was on a zip line at a birthday party and fell, and apparently the Rankin family is just predisposed to elbow dislocation. Mm -hmm. Melody was able to set it without having to take her in. My sister Melody went to school for... Well, it wasn't her birthday, it was... She was at someone else's birthday party. Um, my sister Melody has a kinesiology degree, and um, Kaylee is her daughter. She was able to set the elbow back into socket, or whatever it's called, and reinforce it properly with tape and stuff without having to go and take her in. Oh, yeah. Her little sister has had her elbow dislocated a couple of different times, just for no reason. Like, she'll be holding hands, like, crossing the street and fell down while holding hands with someone, and that dislocated her elbow. <laughs> like, insanely... 
uh, I was going to say lightweight, but that's the wrong, the wrong word, like insanely not good elbow connection. I don't know. <laughs> I celebrate the moments when I don't have any hangnails, and then as soon as I internally go, yay, then I get a hangnail. Maybe I should stop celebrating. Like this one here showed up yesterday. It's the only one that I have. I don't know. Hey, there's cleanup done on that hand. Do -do -do -do. Ugh, stupid paint. Okay. So after I'm done with cleanup, uh, I'm thinking that we're going to do some swatch stick organization because I've only been live for about an hour and that's like, that's nothing. Well, goodbye. And I'm going to be organizing swatch sticks anyway. And I figure you guys might be interested. So, most of my swatch sticks, um, let me actually move this slide a little bit so you can see better. Um, I found a new home for my swatch sticks because they used to live, as I was talking about before, last stream, on this bookcase over here. This bookcase used to have doors on it, and I had a towel racks with my swatch sticks hanging on them. Um, but, now I have a chain um, connecting from that shelf down to my workstation and I can reach well when the camera's not in the way um, I can reach all of these to get my swatch sticks pretty pretty well but we need to put some new swatch sticks into their little homes along that chain so I when I do swatch stick homing for new polish I tend to go through the rainbow so I'll go I'll start with the white and then go through black and gray and purple and blue and all the way down through green and down through yellow and red and orange and all of the, you know, in order down through, um, I have red and then pink and then nudes and then browns and then taupes on the other end of the spectrum. Um, and I'll just take my stack of swatch sticks and sort out, okay, I'm in the whites now. So then I'll take out all the whites, right? Or, okay, I'm in the reds now and I'll take out all the reds and then I'll get my swatch stick ring out and find them homes. So we can do that together for the ones that are left. Okay. Oops. Let's go this way a little bit, shall we? Turning my thumb to get the other side is always like a slightly awkward situation angle wise like just to do but then to try to get on camera also is like wah wah it's just a little bit awkward okay Of course, after cleanup, we're going to put cuticle oil on as well. I have been making my own cuticle oil this past couple of weeks. And I think last stream I was talking about the fact that my package was supposed to have been delivered and it wasn't. Well, I went onto the Amazon website and it said, if your package says it's been marked delivered, but you haven't received it yet, the first thing to do is wait 36 hours because it could be that it's still coming and it was marked delivered even though it hasn't arrived yet. And I thought to myself, that's exactly what I told James probably was happening. So I waited and yep, just exactly 36 hours later, there it was on my doorstep. So I did get the stuff. 
that I was waiting for. So that was good. It wasn't just lost forever in limbo space delivery land. Um, so jojoba oil and vitamin E oil and fragrance. The first fragrance that I tried was a mango fragrance uh, from that I got on Amazon. I don't have the bottle here with me, so I don't remember what brand, but it smells more like cucumber melon than like mango, which was kind of disappointing, but I also like cucumber melon, so oh well. Um, but then I got a different mango one and uh, an orange one and a kumquat one and a kiwi one and peach mango one and a pear one that smells kind of like spiced pears. And I have several different concoctions. Ooh, I keep over dipping this brush and I keep getting polish right there on that same spot on my middle finger. <laughs> it's driving me bonkers. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it, it has been fun. I think the orange kumquat one is my favorite uh, mix between the ones that I've done. I did one that was a mix between the kiwi and the mango and the orange as well. And that one smells pretty good, but I think I might need to, I don't know, that kumquat smells awesome. I might need to add that in there into the tropical mix one. But the one that I have over here right now on my nail desk is the one that smells like cucumber melon, even though it's supposed to be mango. So that's the one we're going to use today. Actually, not that hard to fill the little nail oil pens. I really like the California mango cuticle oil uh, as well but they don't make the pens. But I guess I could just put their oil in pens, but that's slightly more expensive. Making your own in bulk is slightly cheaper. So, you know. Okay. Kid oil. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. We're going to put the cuticle oil on, and it's going to make the mat look slightly less matte while the oil is absorbing. But later when I wash my hands again, the matteness will reemerge. I'm being quite generous. I'm getting all of the skin where I had the acetone down under the nail so that the nail can get some too. And then I rub it in a little bit. There's nothing wrong with being extremely picky about your fruit scented preferences though. I'm also very picky about my fruit scented preferences. So we're on the same page you and I on that. Okay. Do you see how that makes it glossier because it's got the oil on it? Yeah, that will not stay once once I wash my hands, but we don't need to worry about it while we are doing swatch stick organizing. You know, I might just trim that little bit with a cuticle trimmer. That little dry skin by my thumb, I think it might catch on things and I don't want it to. Me, 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 me. Okay, let's put the lid on this bad boy. And rub in cuticle oil on the second unit. Yeah. I accidentally had this sitting on my paper towel and I spilled some acetone and it adhered some paper towel to the plastic of the cuticle trimmer. Um, you know, so that's not good. Don't do that. But it doesn't stop it from 
working. That's better. Okay. The cuticle on this nail here is always also trying to be V shaped for some reason. I think I've talked about that before. Okay, looking good. So let's get out my little color daily doodles after we close our acetone. Make sure that all of our polish is closed. Yes, good. Okay, All right, let's put these brushes away. I got a little. Ooh, that's my computer. This is what I'm trying to show you. I got a little cup thing to actually hold my tools in rather than uh, what I was using before, which was just an old cotton rounds, not cotton rounds, um, cotton swab little plastic holder. I wanted something that didn't look like I was just keeping trash on my desk. All right. So what we're going to do is I have a little notebook that I use as the background for my swatch pictures just so that they all have the same um, background color. It's had polish spilled on it before and whatever, but this is just like the background. I like to put this down when I'm doing my swatch stick stuff so that I'm comparing colors against the same background so that I'm not, you know, cause color context influences your um, interpretation of a color. So if I have the same context for all of the colors, it helps me to be consistent in my choices about where to put things. Let's put that down. I'm gonna do that so you can see. And then I have a little container. These are the swatch sticks that need to be organized still. And we are in the middle of teals and warm toned greens right now. Or I guess cool toned greens because they're the ones that have a little bit more blue in them. Hmm, people are hosting me. Why didn't it tell me that? Thank you for the people who were hosting me like an hour ago. I appreciate you. I'm sorry that I didn't see that. Okay, so I already took down my little ring. Actually, I'm gonna zoom this out a little bit now that we're not doing nail things specifically so that you have a broader scope of uh, view here. Um, I have the chain, right? And then I have a little clip that's holding two rings of swatches. Um, and I have going white, black, it's actually white and then clear things with iridescent nondescript color things, black, gray, purple, cool toned blues, grayed out cool and warm toned blues because that's like a niche of color that I specifically look for a lot. And I want to be able to compare them to each other warm toned blues, uh, teals, cool toned greens, warm toned and cool toned olive greens, warm toned greens, yellows, oranges, reds, pinks, nudes, browns, and taupes. Kind of going down the road. Um, and each color has the cream polishes on one ring and the shimmers slash jellies slash flakies slash whatever that's not a cream on another ring 
Some need to be broken down more than that. Like my white Crelly polishes, I have a ring for white Crelly glitter polishes and a ring for white Crelly flaky polishes because I have too many white Crelly polishes to fit on one ring together because I like that category of polish a lot. Um, and then there are some colors that I don't have enough of to split the rings. So like my red polishes, all of my red polishes are on one ring, but I have all my creams on one side and all of my ones with different finishes on the other side so that they're still separated even though they're on the same ring. I'm not just sorting the color by color. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So right now, uh, I just finished doing um, the warm toned blues. And so we're moving into teals and greens. So I separated out actually earlier already, so I don't have to do it now. Although I put them back in the thing, but I put them in the opposite direction. So give me a second while I take them out. So we've got, I just took out all the greens and teals so that we can decide what is a warm toned green and what is a teal. My criterion for things being on the teal wheel, that rhymed, uh, is if you sometimes think it's blue and sometimes think it's green and you have a hard time deciding whether it should go with the blues or go with greens. Um, if you think that it is a green, even though it's a blue leaning green, but you never think that it is a blue, then it's going on the green ring, right? So we are on uh, teal. I don't have any creams in this category, so we are going into some of these are thermals. So like this looks green and this looks green here, but they both transition to being blue when they are warm. So that's why they're on this wheel because they are both green and blue, right? Um, and the rest of them, right, are in that category. So let's um, take out the warm tone greens. We know that these are not going to be considered teal. I'm just separating out warm tones from, and if it's olive, those have their sep they have separate. There's I have a cream olives ring and a, you know as we've discussed today it's my favorite color. Um, I have a preponderance of that type of green compared to others. This one is a multi-chrome. It looks from this angle, it looks like a silvered green, but then, gosh I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. Hey there it is blue, right? and then all the way down through. So this is gonna be going with the teals because it looks green sometimes and it looks blue sometimes, right? That was the criterion that we discussed. And again, right now we're just separating out cool tones versus warm tones and then we'll look at the cool tones and decide what is teal and what is not as we look at them. This one has a lot of shimmer in it that's like coppery reddish shimmer, but the base is actually a more um, teal color. So I'm gonna put it on that side. Okay. What do you love? What What is the it? <laughs> the organization thought flow, the a particular color. Okay, so then we have, I got to get close to these guys, sorry. Okay, this one has little green, like ghost flakies in it, in addition to being holographic. Mm, and it looks green to me more than teal. I'm leaning toward that being a green. Okay. This one looks bluish, but also looks greenish, depending on how I'm imagining it. So that's going to go on our teal ring. 
Uh, that was Geekish Glitter Lacquer, Crash Queens, and Motor Babies. This first one was Girly Bits, uh, Things Get Better with Sage. The Multi-Chrome Teal. That one was a Morgan Taylor polish that I just got called Oh So Shifty. And we'll see if I have anything similar. Yeah. It goes from like a yellowish greenish silver up through to a blue with very oceany vibes. From my angle, that's what I'm seeing as I go up and down. Can you kind of get the blue there a little bit? Right? And then it comes down to a more... It reminds me of one of my 1850 polishes. 1850 Artisan Lacquer. We'll have to see how well exactly it compares. But that is going with teals, as we stated previously, because it's got a bow. Um, this is a prototype from Moonshine Manny. Um, it is a green. It's prototype 409. It has a bunch of little purple flakies in it, iridescent purple flakies and iridescent glitters. I think that this one reminds me in concept of her uh, who ordered all vegetables polish from her Incredibles 2 collection, but obviously this is a prototype, and I don't know when she created the prototype, so it might be a prototype for something else, but, you know, it makes me think that she was working along the lines of that polish. Uh, this is Aloe My Sunburn. which that's a very blue leaning green, but still green. It's a paparazzi polish that I got at CVS. And it's spelled aloe, right? Like the plant that would help you with your, pol with your uh, sunburn. Mm -hmm. This one is ethereal, sorry, pardon me, eternal pistachio. Again, a very blue leaning green, but still green. These ones are creams, but I've got my green creams in this ring, so we don't got to worry about it. And this one is Cirque Paloma. Again, green, but with a blue lean. Definitely green, though. Uh, oop. This one is Your Cow Plant or Mine, which is Lindby Designs color. This one is definitely green. It's got a magenta sort of a shimmer in there and a bunch of flakes. It's chock full of flakes. It's got hollow flakes and blue flakes and magenta flakes. And I think they are multi-chrome as well. Uh, Rogue Lacquer, Princess of the Underworld. This one, like I said, has a tealy kind of a base to it, but it has a shifty shimmer in it that goes from, uh, from some angles, it's like a red through a copper to a yellowish gold to a green. Um, and then at other angles, all the way down to an, a very foresty green. So, depending on the shift of the shimmer, sometimes it looks more teal blue, sometimes it looks more green. That therefore tells me that it's going on the teal's ring. All right, Sally Hansen, Pine Shine. This is a very silvery sort of a green. Still green, though. Uh, Cirque Aegean. This is definitely green. It's not blue enough for me to consider it a teal um, in person, especially since it has the gold flakes. It pulls it toward the warm side, so that's going to go on the greens ring. This one is Lindby Designs, just another night at the bar. Okay, this one I could see as blue or I could see as green, depending on my mindset. Which one? The This shifty one? Yes. At some angles, it does look kind of olive because the green or the red pulls it toward that. Um, but the base is more teal. And when the shift turns bluer, it looks more blue. So sometimes it looks green and sometimes it looks more blue. So it's going on the teal ring, just for my mental organization. That one here as uh, Rogue Lacquer, Princess of the Underworld. It was a polish pickup polish. Uh, Pip Nail Vibes, Oceana. This is a Crelly um, that has a sort of an aqua base. I don't separate aquas mentally 
from the greens versus the teals. If it's aqua and it's got a blue or lean, it goes with the teal ones. I guess it's just blue greens. <laughs> um, this one has the blue glitters that pull it slightly more toward the blue, but it is, you know, half of my mind is saying that's baby blue and half of my mind is saying that's mint green. So I'm going to put it with the teals. It's a subtle distinction sometimes. Okay, this one is as you wish. It's a night owl lacquer polish. When I was wearing this with, I did a manicure relatively recently with this and with the Moonshine Manny color, As You Wish. No, Princess Buttercup. This one is As You Wish. The other one is Princess Buttercup. I did a manicure with both of them kind of layering together and the green undertone of it was not showing up on camera properly. Um, this is, to me, a green. It has a lot of blue in it. I don't know how the camera's picking it up. That might be more blue on the camera than it is in person. This is your color? Yeah. Um, it's, it's more green in person to me. Um, just enough so that it's a green. It's not a teal. Um, and then this one, Mighty Mac. This is a thermal polish that goes from green to white. Uh, but it's definitely a green. It's almost white. It's like a, a green tinted bluish, bluish greenish tinted off white. I know you see teal. I can see teal when I look at my screen too. Um, it's not picking up properly on camera. There's, there's a punchy green undertone in it that isn't, that doesn't get caught on the camera. That is, I mean, it's, there's, there's a neon-esque element to it that's more, more, um, more green. Okay, this one has a very dark greenish jelly base. This is Pepnail Vibes Kelp and Coral. It has a lot of glitters in it, so it's kind of difficult to see. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, there, because you can still see my, what I'm doing, but then you get a closer, closer look at, at things. Um, this is green, just very slightly greener than blue. So these ones are going on the teal wheel. So here is the teal wheel. Let me bring you back down here a little bit because I'm going to be looking at them this way and I don't want you to be in my way. Okay. So let's go one at a time. This is the rogue lacquer one that we were looking at, Princess of the Underworld. So these are lighter. I just kind of go through looking for things that are similar. This one is similar in the shimmer, but the base is lighter. These ones are starting to get darker. Here we go. Here's its home right here between these two polishes because these are both relatively dark. Um, this one is starting to get more of the gold shimmer. This one has the base color that's very similar. So that's be going between Le Polish, I Want to Suck Your Bloodstone and MDJ Creations Da Vinci. Yeah, there's some gray in it. Definitely. But it's not gray enough to be gray. These uh, rings that I got, the three inch binder rings, are just the right thickness for the holes in my swatch sticks. Um, but they, if you're moving a whole bunch of them down the swatch stick at a time, you kind of have to wiggle them to get them to move. Okay. And um, they are not perfect, the swatch sticks, when they're made. So when you first put them on, it will push a little rim of plastic from the edge. You see, it can move, right? When it's just one that you're moving, it moves pretty fine. But when you're doing it all together, it makes it a little bit fussier. Okay, next color. This one is the Linby Designs. It's just another night at the bar. This one's a little bit lighter. Let's bring these guys down so that they're meeting in the middle again. Um, this one is lighter. It's not as bright as those. 
It's not as dark as those. We've got lighter ones on this side, so it's not as blue as that. It's not as dark as that. Here we go, right here. Do you see? It's slightly darker than this one, slightly lighter than this one, with the same tone of flakies as these. Okay, this one is the Morgan Taylor Oh So Shifty Multichrome that we were discussing earlier. There, that's a pretty good shot of some of the blue. And then uh, down there, ish. I don't know. Uh, there was something on my nail, but it's, it went away. I don't know what it was. Okay, this one is going to have to be further down on this side, I think. Because it's darker than these. Yeah, those are more grayed out. Multichromes are tricky to pick a spot. I typically will just choose choose one extreme of the edge, or I'll pick the middle color of the shift. It's it's tricky, tricky to pick. Um, but if I have other multichromes of a similar shift, I'll put them near each other. I need to order a party like a guac star the KB Shimmer that has a greener, more olive shift. This one is the tealier. Flake expectations. Very pretty, though. Um, that's a little bit more purple-leaning. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to put it here next to the thermals, next to this iridescent shimmer. Not iridescent shimmer, iridescent flaky. Um, because that is the closest to the color shifting that it has for me to be able to. My nails are still not completely set, right? So I have to be careful not to just like cram them into things, but I'm not being super especially careful. But if I do feel them like jam into something, I'm checking them to make sure I don't dent them. Because if I do dent them, I can smooth them out by just rubbing my finger across the top of them really fast. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I used to have them on two inch binder rings, which were thinner, but I had too many of each color to be able to do that and still have access to the clip to get to the end of the row. All right. Next one is Pep Nail Vibes, Oceana. Pepnail Vibes is a really cool company. They do only Crellies, I'm pretty sure, because the same gal who makes them also has a brand that's mostly creams called Society Wit, which I also enjoy. Um, this is quite light. Freaking Revlon. Every single Revlon polish that I have ever swatched gets this weird white powdery cast to it. If it's allowed to sit and you just rub it and it comes off. But why? There's obviously something in the base of the polish that's causing that. And Essies don't do it. And Essies are in the same parent company that Revlon is. So, I don't know. It's weird. This is slightly brighter than these. Right here. This is a good spot. That's a little bit too dark. Here or here. I'm going to put it here. Here. 
That's next to Hang On To Your Diapies Babies from Nail Hoot and Circle Never Breaks from Polish. But obviously the glitters in it are completely different. So, you know. Sometimes it helps if I wiggle chunks at a time instead of trying to do the whole swath at once. Because really it's, it's the clip that's the hardest to get past because it's slightly thicker than the rest of the ring, right? Okay, and then this one is Geekish Glitter Lacquer, Crash Queens and Motor Babies. And this is a little darker than these, a little bit less saturated than these. It's a little bit, let me bring back some of these, less saturated than these lighter than these so right here it's pretty close in color to this right it's slightly lighter this is just to add sun and be a smudge this is a solar polish that i have not actually tried in the sun because it takes four coats to be opaque i think i think that i got that one as a freebie in someone's d stash like they sent an extra polish just as like a here have it sort of a thing either that or I got it on super clearance at Kmart when they were closing I don't remember which but it takes four coats and it's one of those really pearly finishes that you have to kind of fuss with so I haven't worn it yet all right so that is the teal colors in organization Okay, now we're going on to the warm toned green creams because the warm toned Except my top coat is protecting them. That's what top coat is for. <laughs> when you say that now, I'm looking at them real closely to make sure that I'm not wrecking them. They look fine. Oh, a solar polish praise it is a polish that has a solar pigment. There are other things that are made with solar pigment as well. Um, they change color when they're exposed to UV rays. So when you go out in the sun, they change color. I have a couple of solar polishes. I have two. I have that one, and then I have one that I got off of Etsy, which I thought I could get to change color in my gel light, my LED gel light, to be able to take a swatch picture of it. But it turns out that that actually made it change to a different color, which was very interesting. It was supposed to turn to like an olivey kind of a green in the sun, and it was like a white indoors, like a sheer sort of a jelly white. Um, but the UV light made it turn blue, which is cool, I guess. Your clumsiness always finds a way. <laughs> I like the, uh, the self-knowledge uh, there. Okay, so over here, we're doing just creams, right? Because the other ones are going on the specialty finishes roll. So this one is Paparazzi Aloe My Sunburn. It's right there, right? Between these two. It's a little lighter than this. It's a little darker than this. This is 10 over 10 Liberty. This is SE Bon Voyage that it's going between. As I do this more and more, I think I told you, um, it's like, as they move past the center thing, look at this. They're like shedding little plastic particles on me, which I actually don't mind because I think that will make it easier for them to slide as they continue living on the swatch ring. But it like grates the center off slightly every time it passes across. Anyway. Um, and then 
this one is Eternal Pistachio, which is more saturated than the one we just looked at, but similar. It's lighter than those. And right here. It's lighter than these, but more saturated than these. It's got a little bit more blue than the two that it's between, but not a ton. And I'm going to accept that that is its home. Sometimes things don't gradate perfectly because you don't have the colors that would blend them together. But that's okay. Okay, so when I'm hanging my swatch rings, I am having the colored side of the swatch sticks facing this way. And I am having um, the colors coming from the top down like this, right? So I need the teals to be here and the greens to be here with the things facing this way, which means that once they're facing this way, then I scooch them on the swatch ring so that they're all the way to that side. So that they can rest against the rings here just so that I can find things more easily the next time. Okay, so this it is going back up here. Let me move the camera. Excuse me. Whoa, I just moved the whole thing. Okay, we're gonna hang this one back up and get the next one. Okay, so And this one is the flakies with the cool toned greens and then the olive creams. Olives can be cool toned or warm toned. So I have them as a separate wheel between the sections. Okay, so we're going to do these first, obviously. Let's bring you down a little bit more. Okay, first one up is this super neon-y Night Owl Lacquer As You Wish. Um, it's going to go over here. It is more blue-toned, right, than some of these. But it was not blue-toned enough to go on the teal wheel. So this one is the solar polish that I was talking about. This is the color that it is inside. It's called Zinnia. So it's kind of creamy, not really creamy, milky, sort of a sheer white. Okay, but this one is going to go on the far end of the thing. I'm actually going to do that one later because this is the farthest from the opening. So I'm going to get to that as I move the other polishes forward. Let's see what. Let's do this one. Right in here, right there, between Moonshine Manny, Where Did Our Love Go, and Dollish Polish Harmonious Heart. What I want Cirque Colors to do as I pick up Cirque Paloma, uh, what I want them to do is re-release Mint Chip, because I don't have it. And it's not available. Okay, this one is kind of more grayed out. Still green, but it has more gray in it. Like these. This right here, I think, is probably an okay spot. Let me see if there's a better spot further along the row. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> yeah, these are all too dark. Okay, so if we're going for the lightness, and right there is where the desaturated ones are. Yeah. 
these are stiff enough that I can open them and let them hang usually without having to hold the bottom side of the swatch stick ring, which is nice. There was a couple of them that were floppy enough that they needed extra support, but that's okay. All right, let's do this one next. Lindby Designs, your cow plan for mine. It is right there between Zoya Dillon and Rogue Lacquer, Shanklin Chine, which is a weird name. I don't know. It might be a reference to something that I'm just not familiar with. And then this one is Moonshine Manning Prototype 409. That's the one we were talking about earlier with the iridescent purpley sort of flakes in it and glitters. Oops, sorry. <laughs> it's like a little train going along the track. Do, do, do. Okay. This one is relatively darkish. Okay, oh, this is the one I was talking about earlier, Sea and Enemy. This one is a more dramatic shift. It goes from a very yellowy green. It's not as silvered out. It's a very intense yellowy green all the way up through to a purple. You can't see that angle. You can't see that angle. Um, gosh, it's, yeah, super shifty, but definitely more green than the other one. So they're in different tones. Okay, so... Not as dark as those. A little bit grayer than those. Let's go to the other end of it. We've got darker and grayer. Here we go. Right there. Right there because these are slightly more gray and this is more intense. Okay, so that's next to, I just have Pixlexia from Pampered Polish. This one is girly bits. Things get better with sage. This one is relatively grayed out as well. Um, but it is a little bit less saturated than this one. I'm thinking it's probably going to go there. Let's check over here really quick. Make sure it's not a better fit. That is a better fit. Okay, so it's going next to your cow plant or mine, which we just put on um, next to Shanklin Shine. Oh no! I just broke my clip. That's silly. It's a good thing I have extras. I was holding it weirdly in my hand when I was trying to open the clasp on the thing and I just, I snapped. Snapped the other part off. I'm not gonna put the clip on now. I'll do it after I finish sorting these colors when I'm putting them back together. All right. Uh, this one is the Sally Hansen Pine Shine, as discussed previously, quite grayed out, very desaturated, still green though, just barely. Uh, could go over there, let's check on this side. Yeah, it belongs better on the other side. So this one here, it's going next to 90 Wayward Sun. 
and China Glaze Twinkle Twinkle Little Starfish. And we're over here by the neons, so we might as well put on the Night Owl lacquer that we were discussing earlier. Now that it's more accessible. And then this one is the Cirque Aegean. This one is pretty saturated, but it's also quite dark. Um, I'm thinking that it's either going to go in here with the darks, but these kind of tend more toward foresty greens a little bit. Right here might be good. Either here between Zoya Honor and Limby Designs, Oi to the World, although it has a little bit more blue than both of those, or over here next to the neons and continue that into a darker ending. I'm thinking this is better on the end here, to be honest, because of the uh, intensity of the saturation of the color. I know it's not neon, but it feels like it belongs there better. And then the last one on this ring is the Pep Nail Vibes Kelp and Coral color. That's the kind of grayed out green dark base. And that one is... darker than those right in here next to Sally Hansen on pines and needles okay So that's it for all of the cool toned green multi, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Multi finish polishes. Let's get all of them to the right side of the swatch ring. The swatch sticks are slightly flexible. So I'm not worried about breaking them by pushing them a little bit. Little clips that I have came on these keychains, but I don't really like this because it just adds length. Um, so. Anyway, this is going to be going through, right? And then the other one will be going through in front. Hey, uh, let's see if we have any olive creams. These are the olive creams that I have. You can see that there are some that are more cool toned, right? That tend more grayish with a little bit of a blue undertone. And there are some that are very warm toned, right? That go toward um, a more army green, I guess, distinction. So obviously these are not, uh, these bright ones are not anywhere in the olive realm. Um, this might, there's a fine line sometimes when they're super saturated between olive and, and very yellow toned green like chartreuse. Um, so that's not a cream. These are all going on the olive ring. This is Night Owl Lacquer, All of Me Loves Olive Fall. This is Palette Polish Chimichurri and Paparazzi Salute the Troops. Chimichurri is just one coat. <clears throat> and then these ones are potentially going on that ring as well. Geekish Glitter Lacquer, I Wish I Couldn't Feel a Thing. Uh, it's a supernatural inspired polish, and then this one is different dimensions. I believe in you. It's just saturated enough that I might not count it as. Uh, we'll have to see what I think. Yeah, it's too saturated. That's gonna go with the greens. 
this is pretty saturated. It's the most saturated olive I have, I think. Um, let's get the other greens down real quick. I just want to compare beatnik. Okay, you see how beatnik is a little lighter? This is Cirque beatnik, and this is pa palette polish chimichurri. This is slightly more olive. This is a little bit lighter. But chimichurri is my most saturated olive cream. I am discovering at this moment that that is true. And so we want to put it right here in the middle of the lighter area of the warm toned olives. I pushed on my nail a little bit. I was just making sure it was okay. It's okay. All right. And then this one is Night Owl Lacquer Olive. Me loves Olive Fall. It's a little bit more brown toned. A little bit darker. Um, and it is going to go... right there next to the bus stop from Brago Varnish, who is no longer making polish anymore, which makes me sad because she had excellent creams. I don't think I have any other finishes from her. I think I only have creams from her. Okay, and then this one is Paparazzi Salute the Troops. That's going to go next to the one that we just put on. Slightly less saturated, but still quite dark and warm toned. Okay, so that's olive creams organized. You see there, that's the most saturated one, just there, chimichurri that we just added. Right, it adds a pop in the middle. Um, and we want, with them facing this way, to be on that side. of the ring. Okay. And then we're going to put it through the loop and hang it up again. Again, camera needs to scooch so that I can move forward. Okay. Now we have Olives with things in them. This is Night Owl Lacquer Wildflower Meadows. The um, holographic flakies in here are much more uh, like pop than. Not that I was anticipating. That's not true because the pictures did show that to be the case. But I didn't believe the pictures and they were right. So <laughs> I guess I was surprised by the accuracy of the depiction. Um. I don't know. Okay, so these are my olives that are of other finishes. This one is a very saturated, dark, warm toned olive. So these are saturated, but they're not quite dark enough. So let's come over here. Okay, these are dark enough. Right here. Right here. This is the transition between... I'm actually going to move this one to here. And then I'm going to put this one here or here. Right there. Ooh. 
Yay. I am so excited for you if that's the case. I will come hang out with you. In stream. Okay, so we're moving this color, right? To after like that. And then we're putting those two and then this one. Is that right? Yeah. Let's compare and make sure that that blends well. Yes, that's fine. And then this one, the uh, Geekish Glitter Lacquer. I wish I couldn't feel a thing. Hey, look, there's Feronia. That's what we're wearing right now. <sighs> Slightly more saturated than those. Not as saturated as those. So we're going to put it right there next to Feronia. I mean, they are, they're pretty close. Sorry, I'm wiggling, wiggling my swatch sticks. I think I need to do this more in chunks because it's not, not wanting to cooperate in larger swaths. Little chunks. Okay. Lovely. And then this, I'll have to go back the other direction again. Let's see. All the way back around. Okay. And then on this side, we have warm toned green creams. So we've got cream here, that's cream, and that's cream. Those three are going to go on here. <sighs> These, this whole swath here, um, are my attempts at finding the lightest olive toned green um, for my gradient ombre thing that I would really want to do. This is the closest that I've come, but it's slightly too... It doesn't have enough green in it. It's too brownish green, which sounds like it should be perfect, and that's why I got it, but it's not. It's, it's actually not... Uh, doesn't have enough yellow in it. Um, okay. Painted polish stamped in honeydew. So, 
right there between SE going guru and B bundle monster soft sage which is a stamping polish Uh, this is Color Club looking sharp. This is a matte polish from their summer collection. The Sedona collection, I believe it was called. Uh, this is pretty saturated, but also pretty light. We're going to put it on the other side of Going Guru. Oh, this one I just added is backwards. We want our swatch sticks to be facing the same direction as each other, otherwise they look silly. Okay, and then... This one is the different dimension I believe in you, which mm, it's more saturated like this, but it's darker, but that feels worse than this. So I'm putting it between Zoya Tilda and Zoya Jace. The formula on this is a little more jelly, uh, crelly, I guess, because it's still opaque in two coats, um, than I was expecting it to be when I ordered it, but I'm not mad about it. Do you see how it's darker there in between, but it has the same, like, if I had put it there, it would be darker, but the tone would be shifting the wrong direction, because this is going slightly bluer and this is going slightly greener. Okay. All right, and those are on the right side of the swatch stick ring, going this direction, right? So that ring is going back up on the thing. And next one is the warm toned greens with other finishes. So we got this Lindby Designs Cancer. She's doing a month by month through the Zodiac thing, I guess, this year. Um, which I don't really care about the Zodiac, but the polishes she's making are pretty, so who am I to complain? Alright, it's awfully far down the line, so we gotta do some wiggling. Everybody's wiggling. Do you know what I was shocked and horrified to discover the other day? The, uh, the, da -na -na -na, da -da, from the MC Hammer Don't Touch This Song was totally ripped off, quote unquote, sampled from uh, Super Freak from the 80s. I did not know this. I was listening to the radio and I heard that little riff and I was like, can't touch this. And it was like, Super Freak. And I was like, and yeah. Sampling is stupid. <laughs> All right. This is different dimension. There is no one alive who is youer than you. 
It's got blue metallic flakies and gold flakies in a green base, which is turning out looking a lot bluer right now because of the light for some reason. That's going next to Moonshine Manny the Grinch and Limby Designs Why Not Take Olive Me, which is not olive at all. Look at this. That is not olive. But, oh well. <laughs> okay. And then we have some shimmery topper sorts of things going on here. This is Ethereal Lacquer Rainforest. This is one coat up through four coats just to build up the base. It's got a lot of shifty shimmer in it. Sorry, the light is blowing that out pretty badly. Uh, from this angle, the shimmer is all orange to me. From this angle, it's like a teal. Uh, I can see from that angle for you, it's like orangey. Um, After these two sticks, I think I'm going to call it a stream because uh, I got other stuff I need to do too. Okay. All of the uh, shimmerier, toppy, topperier things um, are over here, but these all are more blue leaning in their shift. And the tone here actually feels like it will go pretty well on this end. So I'm just going to stick it on this end. Next to Scofflaw, Drop Dead Fred. Hey, Snot Face. And this is Night Owl Lacquer look, looking shifty. This is actually not green. Um, the shift of one of the parts of the shifty shimmer is green, but it has other colors in there too. This is going to go on my iridescent ring. Um, I missed that polish when I was sorting through looking for iridescent ones yesterday. So let me swoop my ring around. And I'll hang this one up and we'll put that one on the iridescent ring and then we'll be done for today. Sorry, you're just looking at nothing while I push these down the row. Actually, we should do the yellows so that I know that this ring is done. Because we've done all these greens. I know they're done. And they're going to be on the same ring as the yellows. And I don't have a ton of yellows. So let's do that real quick. Oop. So here's the ones that need to be put away still. right? So we're pulling out the color that we're talking about. I put golds with yellows. And since I'm sorting through the rainbow one bit at a time, look, here's a green I missed. Um, we're left with all the warm tones since I started with the cool tones. So let's put that green with the iridescent one so that we can put those away on their respective rings in a second. And the yellow. Yellows are one of those colors that I don't have enough of to have two separate swatch rings. So I have all my cream yellows over here and all my things that have things in them yellows over here, including golds. Um, and we know that this one is going to go over there because it's gold. But we also don't want to start with those because we've got creams over here closer to the opening. So this is S.E. Cholato. Uh, I debated about whether to put this with the greens or with the yellows. 
in my mind, it does lean very slightly more yellow. So I am going to put it here between Sally Hansen Canary and my Stunning Nails Highlight My Life. It's very yellow toned and I can, I can understand how some people would call it a green, but it's more yellow than green to me. Okay, and then those are the other creams. Okay, and then we have a jelly yellow that will go probably right here. Um, and this yellow called Night Owl Lacquer, This Is Me Now, which is pretty saturated, but also kind of green leaning. So I think it's going to go here at the end of the, of the shimmers. Let me make sure. Okay, and then this one, we're going to put it next to Wet n Wild Mini Number 8. I got a mini set for Christmas at a gift exchange one year that didn't have any names on any of the polishes. I was able to track down the blue that I really loved it was from the Fergie collection, I guess, originally. And I was able to get a full size of that, but nothing from the others. Uh, well, actually, no, I did track down one of the micro glitters that I didn't care about. Um, okay, this is the Five Rolls Gold Rings, the faded version from Glorious to Carol. After all the pink came out of it, it's just a gold now. Um, it's a very neutrally sort of a gold, though, so it's going to go over here. And that means that the flaky is coming first. As I scooch everybody down the line, this is Painted Polish Gilded. It's going to go next to another Wet n Wild Mini, Mini number seven. I just numbered them. They don't have that number on the container. And next to Polish Goldsmith. The texture of the flakies in these is different. This one's a little bit more kind of rolled flaky crushed gold. This is a little bit less um, curly looking. The, the flakies aren't actually curly in the polish one. That, that, that's how they look to me. They look curlier, even though they're not curly. Is that silly? I don't know. Okay, and then this one's going to go right here next to semi-precious tones. Um, actually, I'm going to put it on the other side right so we'll do next to it on this side. Okay. All right. So there's all my yellows. And then we're going to scooch them all back down again this way. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So then we've got these greens and these yellows. And we're going to put those back uh, and get the green with stuff in it. Iridescent. Okay. Let's do the iridescent one. So these are my uh, flaky crelly whites, and these are my 
iridescent and multicolor. Like this one has gold and blue in equal proportion. I'm, I can't decide which one it has more of, so it belongs on this ring too. Uh, this one is going from red through like a green. Kind of similar to topped with unicorn blood. Yeah, we're going to put it there. Because it's got a little more green in it at the polish right. See this one. This is one of the ones that doesn't want to stay. But I put it on a ring that has fewer polishes because then it doesn't have as much of a tendency to dump things off of itself. Okay. Okay. And then the green. I think the reason I missed this is because it has multi-chrome properties and from some angles it looks reddish copper. Um, but it definitely has a green base. Uh, it's Night Owl Lacquer Inconceivable. It's pretty shifty. Definitely not blue toned, so it's not going to go on that end of things. Here's a good spot next to Pining for Fall from Night Owl Lacquer and Polish Caster. It's got a similar, Caster has a red shifty uh, shimmer in it, and that makes them buddies. Okay, that's it for that for today. Let's take a look and see who I can host for you guys today. Your Twitch hanging out. Colette's probably streaming because it's a Sunday night, Sunday evening. Take a look. Looking like she's not on. It looks like the only person that I have on right now is Bob Ross. So either she's not streaming yet, or already finished streaming for some reason, or something like that. So I don't know. Now we're gonna host Bob Ross then, though. And I hope you guys enjoy hanging out with him, you know, watching, watching art stuff. And I will see you probably next weekend.